Malaya, which is Malaysia, and the Dutch East Indies. Huh? Dutch. Dutch East Indies. Oh. So this is a similar situation as the Hossback Memorandum. And you can argue the same thing. Okay, what's the what's the argument for the for and against the Hossback Memorandum? Oh, how did Brussels? No, that was the German. The Hossback Memorandum. That was the German meeting. Remember? What's the arguments for and against the Hossback Memorandum as being a being a plan for war? Being it was Germany. Yeah, that was Germany. But uh, plan. Right. So some say that uh, Hossback Memorandum was a uh, was it reflected the Stufen plan of Hitler, but. How is the Hossback Memorandum not part of a Stephen plan? It was just... It was fine just a it, Mickey? It was just oh. Who was against Hitler? Yeah, just, and it, some people say that it was, a, it was Hitler's plan to find out who was for and against him. Alright, so there, once again, there's two perspectives on this. W.G. Beasley says there's the, there was a military conference, and once again, you could say it's... You, you gotta say that it was Japan's grand plan to take over, the, take over Asia. Or you can also say that it was a meeting to figure out who's on who's on the mil who was a militarist and who's not. And so you look at Japan. This is Japan's pretty much Japan's idea on how to take over um, Southeast Asia. Those are the long-term causes. The immediate causes of the war include the following, and and this is the part where it's interesting because by 1937 Japan was clearly in China already, but in the con in the context of this textbook, the textbooks the textbook regards um, the beginning of World War Two on the part of the Western powers as the beginning of the World Wars. So Japan. So in the textbook, they're looking at, uh, at America's involvement as the beginning of World War II. However, Japan and China has been going at it since 1937, and some people argue even as far as 1931 since the Mukden incident. So one needs to be cognizant of the fact that Japan. I mean, the fight, the conflict in China began much, much earlier than than right after Pearl Harbor. By June 1940, Hitler wins France, and with Hitler's uh, swift victory over France, Japan closes the Burma Road, which is a major supply route for, Chi uh, for the Chinese. And you can see, of course, Hitler taking over France has to do the tourist thing, take a picture at the Eiffel Tower. Anybody been at the Eiffel Tower here before? Oh, I never went to France. It's nice. It's a nice country. I went to Italy. <coughs> Italy's really nice. <coughs> And so you can see by then, uh, Germany has, within 90, by 1940, Germany already occupied the whole part of northern France. The southern part is, uh, is a government established by the French people who basically are disarmed. And so by then, the French basically have been taken over by the Germans. And of course, the Germans attacked. They did uh, something like a sleeping plan, except this time they went through, instead of going through Belgium, they went through the Netherlands, and then Belgium, and then France. And, and that led to their swift victory. We'll talk about that real soon. The Burma Road is important. If you look at, uh, if you look at this, uh, let's see. Chiang Mai is here. Where's the thing? Yeah. So by that time, the Chinese capital was uh, in Chong Chongqing. Chongqing. And the British were sending aid to China to fight the Japanese through inland routes. Because if you look at the, if you look at the, if you look at the shoreline of China, look here, Japan by that time pretty much took took over the whole shoreline. So it was impossible for um, the British or the Americans to send their aid. You know, park along Shanghai and ship their food inland. No, the Japanese aren't going to let you do that. Right, you park here. They're they're, gonna, they're not. They're gonna make sure the stuff does not get to China. So the way to get your get their supplies through to China is to land in Burma, which belonged to the UK. And so they would go through something called the Burma Road and ship it to the back of, through the inland into China. And uh, 
And so the Japanese made sure they were closed to Burma Road because they did not want supplies to go into China. And here's a picture of the Burma Road. Whoa. Yeah. You guys ever travel in like very mount mountainous areas? Yes. Uh, you have? Yeah. Well, when you travel in the mountainous areas, how do you have to travel? I mean, how are the roads well, usually? Uh, yeah, it's always uh, it's either round or you got to go S-shaped. Because if you go straight up, what's going to happen? You can go straight down if your gas is not. If you, it's gonna. It's, it takes. It takes a lot of gas to go straight up, and then, and if or if your car doesn't have enough power, it might go straight down, and that becomes really dangerous for all the cars behind you. Right. <laughs> so, but, but that's the Burma Road in Japan, um, and so Japan closed the road. You know, sent some military there, closed the road to make sure that. Um, China doesn't get any supplies. America then decides to um, cut uh, cut their scrap iron. Basically, do not um, do not give them any iron to fight the war. And Japan, who, who, who once again I can't re reiterate this enough that Japan is short on resources. Japan um, faces a problem of not having enough iron, not having enough resources. Of course, I frustrated them. On uh, in this in this in September, they signed the Tripartite Pact, officially joining officially joining um, Germany and Italy as three powers to to form the Axis powers. America decides to lend money to China in November to resist Japan, and. Um, by the end of that time, of 1940, a new leader came called Hiteki Tojo. And here you have Hiteki Tojo. As you can see, he's very decorated. And he's got, he has a lot of, um, he's called the little Epaulets. Epaulets. So, by that time, the military uh, was undecided. I mean, China was pretty much, China, they were engaged in China. At the same time, the USSR, um, there was the option, the USSR was one of the allied forces. So, well, it was not an allied force then, but um, they, had to cho they had to make a choice. Should Japan attack USSR or attack the Western powers of Southeast Asia? So the military was divided, should they fight here, or should they fight here? And obviously later I'll be decided to fight here. Um, but by 19, when, uh, in, in 1941, when uh, Russia was attacked by Germany, Japan decides, okay, since Germany is attacking Russia, we should take somewhere else. We should take Indochina. And so in July 1941, Japan attacks Indochina and starts taking over, taking over their um, territories in Indochina. America does not like that because, number one, French Indochina belongs to France, but America had a presence in this area as well. And so they're like, we don't like you down there. You're getting a little too close to us. Um, and so they decide to impose a total trade embargo. Absolutely no trade of Japan. And the result of the trade embargo was there was a, it was a crisis for Japan because they needed oil to fight China. There are disputes between different uh, hist history documents. I've seen some say that with the trade embargo, Japan only had six months of oil. I've seen some that say, uh, says Japan only had two years of oil. The bottom line is Japan was out of oil and they needed oil to fight a war in China. And, and so, they, like, like before, um, Japan appeared to be willing to negotiate, but they had to resort to force. Because that's the way they've always been doing things. Since the Sino Japanese, first Sino Japanese War, the Russo Japanese War, um, their invasion, China, they've always been the aggressors and they found that, hey, it works. Hit them, and, they'll f and if you hit them hard enough, they'll give it to you. 
And so we decide the next big plan is to to Pearl Harbor. GG. Right. So on December the second, nineteen forty one, the Japanese decide to bomb Pearl Harbor. Of course, it's in Hawaii. And uh, at the same time, though, they not only decide to attack Pearl Harbor, they attack the uh, decide to attack Philippines, Guam, Midway Island, Hong Kong, the Malay Peninsula, all at the same time. And then they and then war was declared. The very next day, America declared war on Japan. In Japan, um, Japan did declare war, but it was interesting is that. The, the timing of them of them declaring. We'll talk about that later in this class.